I feel better now I shaved. I don't look all weird. Anyway, so I was thinking this morning I'm about to go to the gym and uh, I was thinking about just health and fitness. And, you know, I'm big into the bone health, I think. I could, it, it might be like in 10 years or two weeks or two days when I die, whatever, and they cut me open. I have like the worst bones ever, and I thought I was doing so good. But it's where my intention is. And, um, you know, I do hurt myself. I think I break bones from time to time. But anyway, so I was thinking about kind of the double-edged sword of the standard American um, suffering, right? So I think I've talked about it before in varying degrees of depth. I'm going to again, um, you know, the source of, of our life, of our livelihood, of our chi energy, of our health and well-being is in our bone marrow and the stem cells. And I think uh, you basically have two primary pumps um, for for introducing stem cells into your body. First is the shrug. And you can hear like clicks and pops and stuff. But I think like you have in between your shoulders, your breastplate and your spine, like this movement, especially for long periods of time really um pumps stem cells into your body the other one i i'm gonna call it horse stance because it's horse stance it's what it is it's horse stance but you know horse stance or box squats um moving the hips so i would say that those two uh movements the shrug and the horse stance um are probably because that's like the big mass of bone in your body you know what i mean but where's the others so anyway additional things to um liberate that life force so you know we got all this fat and coagulated oils and all this oils are bad you know the the coagulated oils, I think, that seep into the little cracks and crevices of your bones that aren't, like, necessarily, um, oh, strengthening the bone. They're, they're clogging up the little micro channels. I, I, I'm just imagining it. I don't know, but this is how I imagine it works because I can kind of feel it. It's weird. But I think, like, in all your bone, like, even in, like, the hard parts of your skull, you have these little cracks and pores. And, um, I think that they get, like, filled in with, um, coagulated oils and fats and stuff. And part of the reason why, like, red light therapy is beneficial isn't just that it stimulates the circulation, which it does. I think that's the primary benefit is that it uh, causes the red blood cells or the red, the, the, the veins and capillaries to separate. And then the, it basically, excuse me, simulates, um, your body thinks you're bleeding and you kind of, you seep out some um, immune cells and your body thinks you're bleeding with red light. But I think a secondary effect, and this is where it could be applicable to other uh, areas of bone, is it, uh, it warms the skull and warms the heart and warms the shoulder or whatever and that little bit of heat 
um, a little bit of movement in combination, and I'll get into other things like the vibration, um, can move that oil out of the uh, small pores on, in the bone and help uh, microcirculation of blood, immune cells, stem cells in and out of the bone. And I think that this uh, will dramatically improve health. I do. And I think that goes on primarily. I think if you had to say a spot that was probably most prone to that, it would be the skull. Because obviously oil floats on top of water. And if you're going to have oils permeating a mass of bone, it's going to be there. So I think that that's a, part, a big part of the male pattern baldness. In my opinion, it's the coagulated oils that are uh, building up in the bone uh, over years. And that the red light stimulates the immune function, the, 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 the circulation, but also helps to mobilize some of that oil out um, by, by just a little bit of warmth. Um, then that helps the bone then release more stem cells, which is then further. It's like a double-edged sword. If we, either way you use it, it could be good, it could be bad, but then there's no perfect answer. You know, there's always a cost. You, you get a little bit more circulation, your mitochondria get a little lazier. You know, it's... Life's a balance. We're just trying to stay alive, getting ready for a hot summer, and you know, and want to be healthy. But I think that the if I had to say, um, I'm gonna say three body movements and then three kind of lifestyle exercises. You'll see. So the the stress position of the um, slightly deflected back lumbar on a hard floor to stimulate the circulation of your um, spinal fluid and uh, waste products there within. And that's number one. Number two, you know, the shoulder shrug. Gotta get it pumping. If you can do it for hours, you'll be surprised how exhausted your shoulders will be. I can do it for like, if I were to do it straight up with my arms out, like watching TV, after about 20 to 30 minutes, I'm in pain. It hurts. It's really painful. It's a hard exercise if you give it time. Um, but the primary function of it isn't necessarily to work those small muscles, but you can. I think it's to just pump that um, limp fluid and the, and the blood in and out of the bone. There's a lot of bone there. Take advantage of it. And same thing with the box squats and the horse dance. I've been trying to do splits lately. I'm getting scary close. It's... I'm I'm very inflexible for my entire life, so this new practice with the Hung Fu I've been trying, but the liberation of the the uh, the hip space, um, for the for if not to kick someone in the head, then at least to liberate that um bone. In the, all the stem cells in there. There's a reason doctors will go in and drill into your hip and take out the bone or take out the stem cells because that's where they all are, you know? So why don't you just do it yourself by exercising and stretching, you know? That's what I think. Um. So then you got the horse stance, the stress positions. So you got your three stress positions. And that's number one. And then number two is going to be the red light therapy. Um, 
give you the nanometers, but you know, the one I got was pretty expensive. It was like a hundred bucks. I've gotten cheaper ones. You can tell the difference, the light, the heat from the light. It's very, I, I suggest spending a hundred dollars on a good red light. I didn't do the whole Jew thing that was probably too expensive and I wanted a flexible pad so I could form it to my shoulder or whatever I was trying to heal but I found it to be very effective and then the the third is oh, the vibrating plates at 40 hertz um, I think that this is like super critical for uh, removing scar tissue from everywhere in your body slowly um, over time the breaking down of that scar tissue uh, to be repaired is done at 40 hertz the additional benefits are the liberation of a lot of blockages a lot of you know so the downside is you are potentially mobilizing a lot of stuff that is going to end up at your feet so then you know you have that issue you do not like you're standing on a jackhammer and you got foot problems it shouldn't take you that long to figure out that all the shit shaking down to your feet <laughs> you know you gotta stick your feet up in there but whatever so those i think the three things are like so critical. I just wish that those stress positions were taught to me. I honestly think I would be like three inches taller. I really do. If I had, if I had, um, utilized that, uh, that stretch during uh, my develop developmental years. It's not a knock on anyone. It's just like I'm telling people because I wish I knew. You know, that's all. That's all. I'm not saying like, oh, you guys are jerks for not telling me. I'm saying I'm telling you because if I had known earlier, I feel like my life would have been better. And I want that for other people. So it's not a domination thing. And I'm not mad. I just think that, you know, it could probably prevent uh, multiple sclerosis. I think it could mitigate the risk for a lot of cancers. I think that it could uh, diminish the uh, cases of Alzheimer's. I mean, managing the blood flow and circulation just around the neck um, I think is a big part of the reason why people develop um, Alzheimer's. It's a uh, northern climate issue primarily, and it's obvious why. You have a, a big engine burning a lot of fuel, and then you have a cold neck because it's cold outside, <laughs> and that constricts the blood and all the drainage and stuff gets constricted along with it. So you have the buildup of the waste products, which then over, it's not the end of the world. It's, you have a big neck and you have internal heat, but the, the slight edge over years, um, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of hard winters, and you develop Alzheimer's, if you make a lifestyle change, maybe you mitigate that risk. That's what I'm saying because of the causes and conditions that I believe. So that's, that's all. So I think that that's my um, contribution.